New GitHub Copilot research finds downward pressure on code quality. This is some legit research that just came out, studying different projects and companies that have adopted Copilot to see how their code quality has been affected over time. And the results are actually really interesting. So let's dig in. New research on the effect of AI-powered GitHub Copilot on software development cites some adverse results. The Coding on Copilot white paper from GitClear sought to investigate the quality and maintainability of AI-assisted code compared to what would have been written by a human. In other words, is it more similar to the careful, refined contribution of a senior developer or more akin to the disjointed work of a short-term contractor. I don't like this spectrum, so to speak. I feel like AI code's a secret third thing where intent can't be understood. Like I understand the intent of a short-term contractor. They're just trying to get the thing to work. I understand the intent of a senior developer. They're trying to feel good about their job and brag. But this in-between that they're suggesting is where AI lives, I don't believe in. I think AI is this weird third thing of an attempt to solve the problem that you may or may not understand with implications underneath you almost certainly don't. So we'll see where this goes. The answer to this is summarized in this paragraph from the white paper's abstract. Coding on Copilot. 150 million lines of analyzed code and projections for 2024. GitHub's quote is 55% faster coding, 46% more code written, 1.5 trillion added to the GDP. The numbers like these little wonder that GitHub's own CEO has been taking time from his usual CEO duties to write about the AI revolution. Apparently, more than 20,000 orgs are already using GitHub Copilot for business. Checks out. You know what? Let's run a poll in chat quick. I am actually curious. So it looks like that we're hard leaning yes with about 30% saying no. For me, it would be like yes, but not anymore would be yes and different. Like if you weren't indifferent, you just pay for it. My answer is always use it. I, I, I'm I a copilot guy now. I didn't think I would be. I even have multiple videos where I say like, I did not think I would like copilot yet. Here we are. And I use it all the time now. So yeah. Yeah, more no, but interested on YouTube. Very interesting. But they, like there is actually a meaningful difference between the way the votes are skewing between platforms. I've gotten the answers I was looking for here. Looks like between 60 to 70% of people who hang out in a community like this one are already using Copilot and at least 40% are actually liking it. Really good results. I'm going to end the poll. I have everything I wanted to see. Thank you guys. We can see why so many people are using Copilot for business because once you're using it on personal stuff, it sucks to not have it for work, which has resulted in a lot of companies adopting. Interesting. A separate study that GitHub undertook by Wakefield in 2023, June 23, they assert that 92% of US-based developers working in large companies report using an AI coding tool. That feels like bullshit to me. Okay, there's the difference. 90% have used an AI tool either at work or in their personal time. That's a huge difference. They did not include that in the article that, or in the uh, report there, but in their personal time, they've tried an AI tool. That makes more sense to me. The problem with AI generated code. Are they really embedding tweets inside of actual white papers? That feels weird to me. Every time somebody gives me shit for a fake tweet in a thumbnail, now I'm gonna cite this. Say, look, there's actual research where people cite tweets too. Yeah, I feel like my job is less cringe now that I've seen this. Anyways, do as I say, not as I do. If you really care about these things, go read the research and all the things it cites. I'm reading three abstraction layers forward because I just wanna know what's going on. So let's read the abstract. We find disconcerting trends for maintainability. Code churn, the percentage of lines that are re reverted or updated less than two weeks after being authored, is projected to double in 2024 compared to its 2021 pre-AI baseline. We further find that the percentage of added code and copy-pasted code is increasing in proportion to updated, deleted, and moved code. In this regard, AI-generated code resembles an itinerant... They're just making up words at this point. I see why Prime didn't read this article, though. In this regard, AI-generated code resembles a contributor, that's whatever this board means, prone to violate the dryness, don't repeat yourself, of the repos visited. Yeah. AI is anti-dry, for sure. AI doesn't care about what repetition even is. AI loves to repeat. In fact, AI was basically built to repeat at scale. That serves as a counterpoint to the findings of some other studies, including one from GitHub in 2022 that found, for one thing, developers who use GitHub Copilot complete tasks significantly faster, 55% faster than developers who didn't use GitHub Copilot. I will say I lean in favor of that. I have one little bit of proof. This is my proof. I've never broken top 100 in advent of code before. I can break top 1000, but for me to be 256 day one, having lots of sub 1000 times, it's really, really nice. Being able to write a comment and name a function such that Copilot knows what to do from there lets you move stupid fast, like stupid fast. I don't remember what the day 24 was. Let me double check it so I could see what I did. Oh, it was a position and velocity thing. Yeah, I was able to just 
right the start of the function, be like, hey, this function should do this. And then Copilot filled it out for me. And then I got an answer before anyone else, well, before hundreds of thousands of other people. Oh, I, I have confessed to using Copilot for Advent of Code many a time. That's just reality. Like they say not to use AI tools. What they mean is don't use things you like pass the question input to and then get an answer from. I'm using Copilot. If I get banned from Advent of Code leaderboards for that, cool. That's a That's some good content I can make. Back to this. So as I was saying with the 55% faster number, I believe that I can go pretty stupid fast with Copilot for a lot of things. Doesn't mean I trust the code I wrote with it, but I can run the code and I can get answers. It's really, really nice. And I just saw a question I'll sidetrack for a little bit. Is Copilot the best code AI? I don't actually care if it is or not because Copilot has the best DX and integration. There are a lot of things that claim to be 10 to, I don't even know what percent better than Copilot in terms of the likelihood you accept the recommendations it makes, but I don't care about the quality. Like DaVinci resolves a better video editor than Final Cut. But Final Cut's experience is the thing I like. And I think we'll see this with AI tools where everyone's so focused on making the, the best performing AI tool with the best results and not on how we actually use it. Doesn't matter if you make something twice as good as Copilot because people will still just use Copilot. Anyways, the study was noted in the new white paper from GitClear, which sells a cloud-based code review tool. Interesting that GitClear is also doing code review type stuff. So they have, they have an incentive to go after GitHub a little bit here. It's a very good call that they made here about that because I had no idea what GitClear did. In addition to productivity, the GitHub study also measured positive effects in developer satisfaction in conserving mental energy. GitClear's research, however, investigated how the composition of code changes when AI is used. GitClear said its report sheds light on the following. First, what are the three significant changes since Copilot's introduction? Two, what do technical leaders need to be on the lookout for in 2024? And three, how can you measure the impact of AI on your team's code quality? Regarding the first item, the paper indicated the three most significant changes associated with Copilot's rise concerned churn, move code, and copy-pasted code. Versioning churn. The bottom line is that using Copilot is strongly correlated with mistake code being pushed to the repo. This is something I don't disagree on. I know Prime's had a lot to say about this, where as much as Copilot saves him time, he ends up looking at the code that was written much later on when there's a bug, not really understanding it because he didn't write it or really review it. It just appeared in his editor and he committed it. And I know that's been my experience too. When Copilot does its thing, I don't think about it enough, especially for more complex functionality. When it comes to like markup or names of components or calling things like a use query, it's really nice to have to type those things out or defining a type. But when it comes to complex logic, it's it's a little too tempting to hit that tab button. And once you do that, you've just accepted code that you might not be fully familiar with. And that results into a pretty significant bump year over year in code churn. My counter argument here for why these numbers are gonna be inherently kind of fucked is that the companies adopting AI tools are going to skew more, I don't know how to put it other than like hyper growth, like companies that are more interested in growth, moving fast and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Those same companies are gonna be the ones that are hiring more, grabbing more junior developers and possibly churning more code inherently and having more problems too. I would argue a bunch of junior devs being hired by your company would have a similar impact to all of your employees suddenly using Copilot in terms of these specific metrics. So unless they're controlling for that, I'm not sure how reliable comparing AI companies to non-AI companies necessarily is in this way. We'll keep digging though. I'm sure they did a good job of this. The next part here is less moved code implies less refactoring and less reuse. Combined with the growth in code labeled copy-pasted, there is little room to doubt that the current implementation of AI assistance discourages code reuse. Instead of refactoring and working to don't repeat yourself code, these assistants offer a one keystroke temptation to repeat existing code. Yep, again, it's the temptation of the tab that it's just the code is there. You could write it or you can hit tab and not have to. It's just sitting there waiting for you to do it. The same way your phone is there and you see the notification and you don't want to click it, but you want the bubble to go away. So you just click it anyways and now you're on Twitter for 20 minutes. It's that, but for our jobs, which is very scary. And then this third point here is that more copy-pasted code implies future headaches. Yeah. There's perhaps no greater scourge to long-term code maintainability than copy-pasted code. In effect, when a non-keyword line of code is repeated, the code author is admitting, I don't have the time to evaluate the previous implementation. By re-adding the code instead of reusing it, the chore is left to future maintainers to figure out how to consolidate parallel code paths that implement repeatedly needed functionality. I got a spicy take here. This has been a problem for a while. Nothing to do with AI or even copy-paste. CodeGen has this problem really bad. I'll never understand why everybody loves the crazy code generator helpers that stub out 15 files for you to make a hello world with Rails. Once you've got your project started, everything 
everything should be pretty easy to do by making a new file and writing code. And if it's not, I would argue it's a failure of the technologies that you're using. I have concerns that in a lot of ways, AI has almost become a replacement for code gen and people are doing the same thing they were with code gen where they were adding a bunch of code even though they only needed a little part of that functionality. Be it they copy pasted a huge thing from somewhere else, AI copy pasted a huge chunk from somewhere else, or a code gen tool stubbed out 15 files when they only need two. All of these things feel like the same problem to me, just different ways to get there. Someone said, isn't that basically what Create T3 app is? Absolutely not. In fact, we went out of our way to make sure once you've run Create T3 app, you can't run it again. It's done. You've started your project. If you want to add a new route to your project, you have to go make a new file. It's not part of your developer experience. It's part of your initialization process, which is fundamentally different. If the Rails CLI was just a way to init a project, I wouldn't give a shit. When you're going to add a new route to your Rails project, people always reach for the Rails CLI because it just does it for them. And there's so much boilerplate they have to write. Again, code gen is scary to me and Copilot and tools like it take the code gen problem and make it one tab press away constantly. It's a lot of small versions of the same issue. And it's interesting that this study is making me realize that all these problems are kind of the same problem. The paper concludes, how will Copilot transform what it means to be a developer? There's no question that as AI has surged in popularity, we've entered an era where code lines are being added faster than ever before. The better question for 2024 is who's on the hook to clean up the mess afterward? I could do a very long video about this question. In my opinion, the future is that when things get messy enough, they're not worth maintaining. They'll be replaced with better, simpler things by developers who are probably using the same AI tools, just building it better. But if one code base or one company's code falls apart because they didn't have good maintenance processes, processes throughout, now they're worse at addressing their users' needs. Another company can form, get good enough much faster, and then compete with them. It's cool this article listed a bunch of other studies that have been done about GitHub Copilot and its effects on developer productivity and code maintainability over time. Very interesting to see how much this has been studied. I had no idea people were digging this deep on it. Let's see what the conclusions are. First one's conclusion was, we found evidence which corroborates the current consensus in the literature. Copilot is a powerful tool. However, it should not be flying the plane by itself. Second study's conclusion was, our empirical analysis showed that GitHub Copilot is a promising tool based on the results. However, further and more comprehensive assessment isn't okay, useless. Third one, as more developers embrace these tools and acquire proficiency in the art of prompting with generative AI, it becomes evident that this novel approach to software development has forged a unique, inextricable link between human and artificial intelligence. The symbiotic relationship has the potential to shape the construction of the world's software for future generations. That's a very bullish take. This final one, the results of this research indicate that developers' opinions are divided. Most of them met GitHub Copilot before attending the survey. The attitude to the tool was mostly positive, but not many participants were willing to use it. Concerns are caused by security issues associated with using who the f fuck did they study? This study is very interesting to me. Why am I not surprised it's Poland? No offense to Polish devs, but y'all love maintaining the past. For the purpose of the study, a total of 42 answers from developers with different seniority and specializations were examined. 42 people. How did they find them? The survey was created in Google Forms and distributed between software devs from the author's environment and through social media, including Facebook and LinkedIn. <laughs> I can't say I'm surprised that Facebook and LinkedIn devs taking Google form surveys are a little more skeptical of AI tools than other developers. For some reason, that doesn't surprise me. So yeah, as per always, read the methodology of your research before you cite it, because a lot of the time it is bullshit. Also, what I have to say on this one, I still use Copilot. I still love it. I'm curious about you guys though. Do you use Copilot? Do you like it? You're allowed to use it at work? If not, why? Let me know in the comments. I do really want to understand what people's experience with these tools are like because I was skeptical going in and I came out a huge fan. So let me know. Chat with you guys later. Peace nerds.